Shalom, Israel. It's your brother Marcus G back with yet another truth for thought. Um, first and foremost, I want to give all honor, praises, and glory to the most high. Um, must it is a must that we give all praises, honor, and glory to him. Second of all, and this is all before we get into this week's truth and thought. I want to commend all those that were in attendance. I understand that for whatever reason that a great number of you Israel could not be in attendance for the first um, royal gathering. And I understand, I understand. But I do wanna run something by you and why I'm commending those who attended, all right? So if you would, please, in your 1611 King James Version of the Bible with the Apocrypha, I want you to please turn to Zephaniah 2 and verses 1 through 2. I'm going to get verses 1 and 2. And it reads, gather yourselves together, yea, gather your together, O nation not desired, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the check before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Now, the reason I'm commending those who are in attendance is because if you notice at the end of verse two, which completed that whole statement, it was a period. Now, all sentence types or types of statements, be it an interrogative statement, a declarative statement, an imperative statement, they all end in a certain punctuation mark. And this ends in a period. Now, most sentences that end, well, all sentences that end in a period are either imperative statements, which are something like, this one, it's an imperative, and it's also a declarative because when it says gather yourself together, you notice it doesn't have a noun before the verb. The first verb is gather. So it's imperative because it is imperative that you goes before that particular action verb. So it's actually you Gather yourself together, O nation not desired for Israel. So it's a commandment. Long story short, I commend those that were in attendance for adhering to a commandment. Point blank. Now, my beloved brother, Mike Malice. <laughs> dropped a little nugget in his last um, lesson just last night. And he said, there will be another. He winked his eye and said, hint, hint. I was in the chat. I simply stated, there will definitely be another. Yes, Israel, there will definitely be another. King Porter was there in the chat. He said, he pretty much agreed, there will be another. Over the last four or five um, True for Thoughts, I have said, if you have not gotten your tickets, I implore you. The reason I'm imploring you, the reason that I'm urging you, the reason that I'm encouraging you to be in attendance is because it is a commandment. So I had told the people when we did the meet and greet, um, and this was after the, the, the gathering, we did a meet and greet afterwards. I said, I'm going to explain to you all why it was such a big deal and why it's so great that you are here in attendance. So there you go. Um, Mike hit on it as well in his lesson last night. 
I'm heading on it here today. So with that said, for the royal gathering, I did a lesson on Gog and Magog. Um, if you were not live, where you, if you were not in attendance, or you didn't watch it live, it is still on Mike Malice's channel. It is entitled Mike Malice Live Stream. That is the Royal Gallery. Um, you can go back and watch the whole show. It did cut off early. We are working on getting the original um, recording, which will have the, the whole show in its entirety. And try to get it uploaded on this channel. But I did a, a, a message, a, a lesson on Gog and Magog. And I explained when I started it that a lot of my lessons, in fact, one, two, three, four, five, five of my last six lessons have been prophetic type lessons, meaning lessons of prophecy, all right? I'm going to name them off for you. The first one was judgment, the storm before the calm. The second one was the book of life. The third was doomsday, time is drawing nigh. And that one I spoke about the doomsday clock where man got the idea of doomsday clock. I even show in the Bible where that idea of the doomsday clock came from. I also did famine. It is here in regards to the famine that started way in 2020 and is still going now in Afghanistan. I also, in that particular lesson, went into Revelations, and I'm going to go into that and in this lesson. Revelations 18, and I only did verses 1 through 8. Um, then, because it speaks of a famine in Babylon. But we're going to go more into the prophecy of Babylon a little later on in this one. And I also did just last week, Gog and Magog. All of those true for thoughts were based on prophecy. Also, last week at the Royal Gathering, I explained why. And I'm going to share that with you now, just in case you weren't there. But if you go to Ecclesiasticus 39 and 1, and I'm actually going there myself now. This is the reason why. And it reads, but he that giveth his mind to the law of the most high, and is occupied in the meditation thereof, will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. So that is the reason that I've been doing these prophetic or lesson or truth for thoughts. Towards prophecy or things that are prophesied or to come. So with that I'm gonna um I'm gonna also say the reason that I label or named this series as true for thought is because first it's coming straight from the Bible so that that's the true part. And as far as for you, Israel, for thought is things to make you think, things to make you go into the, the word or the truth to seek her. Now, a lot of people probably wonder, who is her? Well, her, as I'm referring to, it, is a her, as it's referred to in the Bible, which is wisdom. 
So with that, I'm going to read Ecclesiasticus 39 and 1 again, and you will hear that word. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancients and be occupied in prophecy. I explained last week that the truth for thought, why I'm so happy, why I'm so full of energy and full of joy. I explain why I'm so glad and why I'm rejoicing so. So if you didn't get a chance, if you were not wrong, and entertain it, or you didn't get a chance to watch it live, please, I implore you yet again, I urge you, go check it out on my beloved brother, Mike Malice's channel. Again, it's entitled Mike Malice Live Stream. All right, so I'm going to go from there to, I'm going to stay in the Apocrypha. I want to go to Ecclesiasticus, and I want to go to chapter 24 and verse 33. Now this is coming straight from the most high, okay? And it reads, and I will yet pour out doctrine as prophecy and leave it to all ages forever. I'm touching on this so that Israel, you will understand there is no coincidence or irony in this. There is no, the Most High did everything perfectly up to and including this truth, the word. There were things that were prophesied in the Bible well before the day that it will happen. That's why you'll see on occasion in that day, that phrase, or in those days, you will see phrases like that because as it says here, I will yet pour out doctrine as prophecy and leave it to all ages forever, which means all the generations to come. Those prophecies, although they were, they were written way back when, they're here for all of our descendants to come. All right. <clears throat> I want to go from there. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to go from there to second address. So second Ezra, I'm sorry. We're staying in the Apocrypha. We're going to go to second Ezra. And we're going to go to chapter 15 and verses 1 through 4. Now, this is the most high speaking to his prophets or others know, know them. And it's in the Bible. It's written, watchmen the watchmen of Israel, okay? Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people. Who, is his, who are his people? Israel. We are his people. The words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. Now, what I talked about when I when I talked about Gog and Magog at that point in time, things that are happening just now a week later, they hadn't happened yet. I was talking about these things happening, and now they're happening. They're coming into fruition now. I talked about them, not because I thought of it or because I came up with it. The most high put it in, in. 
put it in me, but he put it in this, in the word. And all I simply did, all that I did was relay that which is in the word to you, Israel. That is it. So yes, he put it in my mouth because it was in his word and I'm always reading his word. And I went ahead and presented it to you, Israel. Again, that was in um, at the royal gathering. Verse two, and caused them to be written in paper for they are faithful and true. So when they were writing, when the prophets were writing, each of these books right they were writing things that he put to them and the reason that one of the reasons that I call the Bible or I say this, this word is the truth is because of this verse for they are faithful and true okay i said in my last slide and in several <laughs> of the um scripture i did it was saying to not be troubled when you hear of wars and rumors of wars. Don't be troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not now, was one of them. The end is not here, and the end is not by and by. But all of them said basically the same thing. And those three verses were, and I'll get those for you real fast. Those three verses were Mark, Matthew 24 and 6, Mark 13 and 7, and Luke 21 and 9. But in all of those, they said basically two times it said, be not ye troubled. And one time, one time it said, be not terrified. But they all pretty much mean the same thing. So let's look at verse three, because there is no coincidence or no irony. And let's see what this says. Fear not, Israel. Don't be troubled. Don't be terrified. The imaginations against thee, let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Now, believe it or not, Israel, verse 3 and verse 4 splits up the one-third and the two-third. For that one-third, fear not the imaginations against you. You'll be told you're in a cult. You'll be told you're crazy. You'll be told you're talking about Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity, and we're going to get the uh, definition of incredulity as well, of them trouble thee. Don't be troubled. I think I've said that um, over the last week, I know at least 20 times. Don't you be troubled. That speak, that speak against thee. Now, for the two-thirds, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Now, I did a lesson on the book of life. In the book of life, what will be recorded is two things. Your faith and your works. It clearly says for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. It will be the second death. That would be the second death. That's not the only way to end up having to endure the second death. Not doing the works. Not keeping the law of statutes and commandments. 
again, it is commanded that we gather ourselves. So I'm going to say again, not keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments. Not keeping the high holy day. Not keeping the Sabbath as a holy convocational day. So being unfaithful, yeah, that'll, that'll, get, that'll get you to endure not believing. And my beloved Mike Malice did a lesson on this just last night. Not believing in the fact that, one, there is a most high. He is the most high of Israel. Two, not believing in his son. Christ, Jesus, Yahweh Shah, unfaithful. And it says here, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. It is no irony that I was bringing, my lesson has been done. I've had this lesson ready to go since last week sometime. I'm just now doing it today. There is no irony that my beloved brother, Mike Malice, touched on this. It's called One Accord just yesterday. You know, that's that One Accord. He mentioned that even in the, um, at the gathering. King Yada did a song that he did not know he was going to do about opened and closed doors and Mike said that is cool. all right so we're gonna go from there to second Peter second Peter so we're going to the New Testament now second Peter and we're going to go to Chapter 1, and we're going to get verses 19 through 21. Now, we saw in Ezra where the Most High was speaking to prophets or watchmen for Israel. Let's see what the Most High says as far as them projecting or speaking of the truth and prophecy. That was in 2 Ezra 15, 1 through 4. So now let's see how the Most High, what the Most High says in regards to those that are of Israel that are receiving those words that the prophets are watching are projecting to them. So 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna kind of revert back to in 2nd Ezra 15, the most high is telling prophets and watchmen, go out, tell my people these this this doctrine, these prophecies even write them down as they are true, as they are faithful and true. Then even splits up the one-third and the two-third in verses three and four of Israel, not of everybody. Let me make sure that we get that understanding. All of this that I am talking about, trust me, regardless of what you may have heard, Wherever you may have heard it, I'm just going to say that so I don't have to name off all these different um, denominations of religion. 
You may have just heard it from the world and the world could be you just heard it from your mama or your, your dad. Regardless of where you may have heard it, this whole Bible, although it mentions other nations, it mentions um, other walks of life, it mentions the world. This whole Bible is about you, Israel. You and you alone. Whether it's telling you how to deal with the world or how to deal with even nations or how to deal with, um, and again, I'm not going to name all these denominations, but let's just, I'll just put it kind of like I put it, it's not going to be verbatim, but it's going to be, it's in the Bible. Dealing with these wolves in sheep clothing. In fact, again, my beloved brother Mike Mallis just said just last night, you better prove these people. Before you just listen to the world, tell them it's and this, this I say faithfully. Mike said it at the beginning of his lesson in the Royal Gathering. Her first Thessalonians 5 and 21. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. If you can't prove it with this word, it's null and void to me. It should be like that for you, Israel. Because this is, this book, is a, this truth is about you. Even the prophetic parts, the parts that are to come in that day, in those days. I even said just last week, there's a prophecy coming into fruition right now in your day. All right. Let me continue on with this. Um. Knowing this first, that no prophecy, this verse 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. If you've never heard this before, do not lean onto your own understanding. Okay? That is exactly what that is. That is exactly what they're saying. Don't you try to figure it out on your own. Because man, like, like I, I went into this uh, back in on the doomsday time and drawing out. Man wants to, they have this, they have a subject that they title is science. They want to attempt, and always have, wanted to attempt to explain that which they can't. So they come up with some things to try to do so. The Doomsday Clock. They said it at the exact same time that they said it last year. But see, what they didn't know while they were trying to do a scientific explanation. Their scientific explanation was pretty much nothing in the world has changed. But what they did know is that, yes, things in the world had changed. In fact, Gog and Magog, a prophecy, there a prophecy about Gog and Magog was to happen shortly thereafter was to begin to come into fruition shortly thereafter. Now they reset this clock back, I wanna say towards the end of January, beginning of February, somewhere around there, let me see. One, two, yeah, yeah. So that's when they reset the clock, right? They reset it for the same time. Because they can't, they don't know everything. First, they're, they're trying to 
they are attempting to do that which the most high, which is the all-knowing, all-seeing, almighty God of Israel, right? They're attempting to have his type knowledge. Now, when the most high put it in the prophets and in their mouths for them to write down in this book, That's a knowledge that your normal everyday man will ne probably never acquire. In fact, we'll never acquire. I am a man. I'm a mere man. And this is what I say about things when it comes to the most high. He never ceased to amaze me. Not that I couldn't fathom that that he's capable of, but he does everything perfectly, unequivocally perfectly. All right, um, let me go go ahead and knock this this little group out. Verse twenty one: For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man. Again, this is the reason why man shouldn't lean on its own understanding. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Even the, the, those holy men, those watchmen, those prophets, right? It was bigger than them. They were speaking, but they were speaking that which per 2nd Ezra 15, the most I put in him by or via the Holy Ghost. When I did the, the lesson on God and May God, that was bigger than me. That was, that was sure I read that straight to you from the Bible. I went and showed you in the world where it's happening. I want to show you some things today to further prove, as well as show how that can quite possibly lead into the fruition of another prophecy. But that wasn't me, not me alone, no. All right, so let's go from there. We're gonna go to Revelation 1, verse 3. So we're gonna go back to the, I mean, well, we're gonna stay in the New Testament. Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, very simple verse. Very, very simple verse. And this is all for you, Israel. This is directly to you, Israel. Okay? And it reads, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for time is at hand. I'm going to read that one more time. Hopefully me reading it this second time will show not only my sense of urgency <clears throat> in regards to the time, but how important it is to be in the word. Blessed is he that read and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. The time is at hand. I said it last week. I'm going to say it again this week. 
said it at the royal gathering. I'm going to say it now. There are things that are happening right around you in the world that you're living in, Israel. When they were reading this prophecy, they were reading with the words in that day. The reason that time is at hand, because some of these prophecies right now are in, they are coming into fruition right now in your day. I want to get a precept today. I want to get a precept today. And actually the precept is in Revelation a little bit more down the line. So we're going to go to Revelation chapter 22, verse 18. And my brother just hit Revelation chapter 22, verse 14, last night. Last night. Revelation chapter 22, verse 18. That's that one accord, Israel. That is that one accord, Israel. And it reads, for I testify unto, in, for I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. Okay. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. My brother Mike Malice last night said, you better prove these people. You better, you really better. Before you just start listening to people, make sure they're not taking from this one, well, adding to anything in this book, in this truth, in this word. Verse 19. I'm just going to go on and get this. Because I want to get to verse 20. Verse 19. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy. So if anybody should take any words away. Now, normally, man does this and I've noticed. In one occasion, so that they can justify that which is not righteous. And I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. For instance, multiple wives. I'll go on and just say this. Multiple wives. Was something that was allowed under one circumstance. When Israel was not in captivity. So we don't meet the criteria for multiple wives because we don't meet the very bare minimum. We're in captivity. But I'll explain to you what that instance was. That instance was if the men of Israel were going off to war to, a vo to avoid another so Sodom and Gomorrah. That was when you can have a second one. But when you were done with that war, you go home and you go to your wife. You don't take a second lady to your home. You do what's called, and I did a lesson on divorce in regards to Israel. You put her away and you go to your wife. All right. 
but men will say, well, look at, look at Solomon. Look at Solomon, he had all these wives and all these concubines and all, and that sound good. And it is written, but if you're gonna just stop there, that can be looked at as taking from the word because if you continue to read a few verses down, Solomon was not evil, not even just said that he did evil by the Most High. He was compared to David. Solomon was compared to David, and then it said, and he did evil. So when he had all this stuff, was he righteous? When he was had all these wives and concubines and mistresses, it clearly says. He did evil. But see, someone who wants to have multiple wives, they're not going to even tell you about that. They just going to stop at the verse that says he has all these wives. That's to make, that's to justify that which is unrighteous. Because even the most high said it was evil. Just some verses down. Okay. So they'll probably argue what they're talking about. His heart was turned by one of the mistresses. His heart was turned from, from the Most High by one of the mistresses or, or one of his concubines. And that's further proof as to why you shouldn't have thus. So then it'll, they'll might say, well, it was a heathen and it, it, it is written for us not to, as a man, go in onto a heathen female and as an Israelite woman, not to let a heathen come in onto them. And that is true for the same reason. They will surely turn your heart away from your God. When you get done, that is true. You are not supposed to deal with the heathen in that type of way. That is true. So if your rebuttal is, it's because some of them was that, I will say to you again, yes, you are true. But it also proves he shouldn't have had her anyway. Like he shouldn't have had the many mistresses. He set himself up for failure by doing that. You cannot justify that to me. Per the word. Point blank. Okay? So now that I got that on. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. I, I just mentioned, I did a whole truth of thought on this. And out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So it's not a good thing. If you try to justify an unrighteous thing by adding to this word or taking from this word, there's nothing good going to come of it for you. I don't care if you're in Israel. I don't care if you are even. I don't care if, if you are in the truth or not. It is written right here. Verse 20. He which testified these things said, surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come Lord Jesus. Now we're going to get another precept. We're going to get another one. We're going to go to Revelations 22, but we're going to go up to 7 through 10. Now, remember, it said in verse 20, surely I come quickly. All right. So 
we're going to get verses 7 through 10. Revelation 22. Same book, same chapter. Same book, same chapter, just different verse, verse 7 through 10. Behold, I, and this is in red, and also I want you to notice in verse 20, surely I come quickly was in red. That was said by Jesus or Christ or Yahweh Shah. Right? So let's go up to verse 7. And it says, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. All in red. That is Yahweh Shah speaking. That is Christ speaking. That is Jesus. All right, verse eight, and I saw these things, and I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which shewed me these things. Verse nine, then saith he unto me, see that, see thou do it not, meaning don't. Don't bow to me, for I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren, the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. So he's telling, the angel is telling John, don't worship me. Per this book, you worship God. I am but a fellow servant myself. Verse 10, and he saith unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. We just read that in Revelations 1 and 3. Now, this is the last book. Or this is the last book, but this is the last chapter of Revelation. So this is said in the last chapter of Revelation, as well as the first chapter of Revelation, in Revelations 1 and 3. Israel, I cannot stress this enough, time is at hand. It truly is. Now, I did Gog and Magog, and since then, some things have happened, and I sent some information to some people. I sent some information to my beloved brothers, King Porter, King Yada, King Mike Mountain. And Mike said, you got to bring this out. You got to tell the people. So I'm going to share with you. And there are a few of you all. If you all are um, followers of me. There are a few of y'all that have seen this. And you probably wondered, why did he send this to me? And it, it kind of goes back. Back to the famine, um, the famine truth of the land. All right, the famine in Afghanistan has not happened because of sanctions of the U.S. I'm sorry, that famine was written about. <laughs> that famine was going to happen anyway. The U.S. was just a little bit of a vehicle. Gog and Magog. What I talked about in that lesson, Magog, God and Magog are just a vehicle for that prophecy to happen. Now, it, I also went over what the Most High has in store for God and Magog. I did. I went over God and Magog in this entire from its inception, as far as who it, it descended from. All the way to what the Most High has in store for them. 
and everything in between, including the prophecy, which is kind of very much so coming into fruition now. A week ago, it wasn't even coming into fruition. It was showing signs of coming into fruition. It's happening now. It's, it's happening. So in the famine, when I also talked about could the U.S. have a famine, and we're going to go into Revelations 18, and you can read that in verses 1 through 8, but I'm going to go into Revelations 18, 1 through 18, if time allows, because I don't want to keep you all for too long. But what I'm trying to get at is really, and I ask this, the uh, well, you'll gather me. You gotta open your eyes. If you read the Bible, and I specifically said the reason that I'm giving you some of the world when I did that lesson at the world. Is because we're going to prove the world with the word. And that in turn will show you that the world proves the word to be true. Meaning everything. It doesn't matter which way you, you can look at it and say, I'm going to look at it from the word view towards the world. Or you can look at it from the worldview towards the word. There is one common denominator. The word is the truth. The world shows that the word is the truth. So I'm asking, are your eyes open? Are they open now? One time. It's kind of of the essence. There is nothing going on in the world right now today, and there's nothing new under the sun that you couldn't read about in the Bible. That's how true the word is. In fact, there are places in the Bible you can read that this is going to happen in the world and it truthfully does or truthfully is or truthfully has happened in the past. Again, proving the word to be true. Are your eyes open? Not only to the world, but also to the word. The most high said, and I'm going over this, In Ecclesiastes 24 and 33, I will make doctrine of prophecy in prophecy. In fact, let me just get, I, I want to I wanna be verbatim with it. I don't want to just tell you anything and be close to it. I want to be, but let me pull my Bible back up. I'm going to go back to Ecclesiastes 24 and 33. Ecclesiastes 24. And I will get, pour out doctrine as prophecy and leave it to all ages forever. Israel, are your eyes? I don't care if, you're, if your perception is coming from the world to the word, meaning you're seeing something that's happening in the world and you go and read the word and lo and behold, it's there. Or are you seeing it from the word to the world? Meaning you read about something in the Bible and lo and behold, it's happening in the world. 
either way. So I'm going to share with you. Share my screen. And you're going to probably wonder why are you looking at this? Why, King Marcus, am I looking at this? Okay. The reason you're looking at this is because when I did these famines, lesson. I asked a question before reading Revelations 1 through 18. Could famine happen in Babylon? Now this is especially for anybody that's living in the good old U.S. of A. I even asked this question just last week at the one of the and I said it is for me. It's written that it's going to happen. Now, that was in the midst of me doing the God of Magog. That's what the God of Magog prophecy looks like it's coming into fruition. So what happened is the United States put these sanctions on to Magog. I let you go and watch Gog and Magog, or go and watch if you don't know who what Magog is or who Gog is. There, one is a person, one is a place. <laughs> go back and watch the live stream on Mike Mouse. I'm not going to tell. I told I I, I I showed it back then. I'm not going to go over that right now. But they're going to put. They put sanctions on Gog and Magog. On Magog, they're looking at putting sanctions on Gog as of today, actually, from what I've been seeing. But I also went over some of Magog's allies, some of Gog and Magog's allies. And they're known as Brick. In fact, Magog makes up one of those letters in the acronym BRIC. So if you didn't see the lesson, go back and look at that lesson and then this will make sense to you. So everybody who saw that lesson, or who knows what the places that make up BRIC, how many of these countries which are the global production of wheat are made up by brick. Now, these are the leading exporters of wheat. The U.S. is here, but they are the very last one. All three of these countries are in brick. Well, God and Magog have sanctions. So guess what won't be able to get an export of wheat from Magog or any of its allies? So I'm sure its allies isn't going to continue to export wheat while there are sanctions on its ally. So I'm going to go from there, and we're going to go to production of corn, right? These are, that's the number two, the major exporters of the production of corn. All right, that's number three and number four. And 
This is number five and number six. How many of the top six are made of are individuals in Britain? I ask again. If there are sanctions on any of the members of BRICS, all the other members are not going to export it either. All right. Which very well could lead to helping in the prophecy of famine in Babylon. because it is prophesied. Now, because of how long I've taken so far, I'm not going to get into it. I'll do that another time. But I'll tell you what you can do. I'll give you a little homework. First, if you've not seen the dog, first, if you've not seen the, the famine, it is here. That's the true for thought. But watch it. Then watch the royal gathering on Mike Malice. And I'll leave the link in, in the description for all, all of it. Then go watch the royal gathering where I go over Gog and Magog. Then I want you to read Revelations 18. Verses 1 through 18. Because I guarantee you that's what I'm going to do next. I know that is what the lesson that I'm going to do next. I'm going to go over the prophecy of the fall of Babylon. I'm going to go over the prophecy of the fall of Babylon. But until then, Israel, I'm going to ask again, I'm going to ask you now, just like I asked at the royal, in fact, I'm going to see if I can find it. See if I can find this. Yep, I found it. I don't have my external hard drive. I would have had my external hard drive on here. I would have word for word read exactly what I read at the end of um, Gog and Magog and um, the Royal Gathering. But if you go back and look at it, pay close attention to that very last slide. Because time is at Man. So with that, I'm hoping Israel that your eyes are open now. Keep them. Time is at hand. I bid you shalom. Hope you all enjoy and have a Sabbath. Until next time, smoke a sheep. I'm out.